Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know by now I review many photographic, audio, video related products. Well today we're looking at another camera, I love reviewing cameras. It's a hybrid camera, it takes stills and video, both of which are great. Um, and I'm hoping it will be able to replace my very trustworthy little Sony ZV, uh, not ZV1, the RX100 VA, which has got its tilted wheel screen. Um, it's a nice compact camera, but the one that we're looking at, uh, which is quite unusual for me, we're looking at this one here, which is the iPhone uh, 12 Pro Max. Let's just use my face to unlock it. The iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now, anyone who knows me knows I'm not a keen fan on mobile phone photography. I never have been. I've not been able to get my head around, you know, holding it up like this for taking the photographs. There's no shutter button on them. Um, you're scared of dropping it uh, because it's a really expensive uh, slab of glass. Um, but I thought if I can find a phone that is, you know, as good as my RX105 or almost as good, then I don't have to carry a phone and a camera with me. Now, we all know mobile phones have completely changed the way that we take photographs and we take video. It's completely, it's not destroyed it, but it's made a massive impact on the uh, DSLR and the mirrorless camera market. It's pretty much destroyed the compact camera market. I mean, the RX100 range and the Sony ZV range, uh, such as ZV1 I'm using here, um, have pretty much, these cameras here, have pretty much, um, well, they're pretty much wiped out. Mobile phones have pretty much wiped out the cell of these sort of cameras. Now, that to me is, is interesting. It means that obviously mobile phones are getting better and better. The sensors are getting better. The lenses are getting better. Everything about mobile phone photography is getting better. And also they're using computational photography. I didn't know what that was at first. And I know what it is now where they're combining elements from the two different cameras or three different cameras to create that sort of depth of field look and to create different effects. Great for nighttime photography and so forth. But at the end of the day, I've always wanted really good quality images. They don't have to be, you know, your full frame uh, mirrorless 42 megapixel uh, images. If you're going out with your family or you're going out with your uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, and you just want to come home with nice images, nice images you can either print, which we don't do very often, or nice images that you can put on the computer, upload to Instagram, um, upload to Facebook, etc., etc. So I thought, well, the iPhone 12 Pro Max has got a good reputation. Likewise, so has the iPhone 12. I've got the iPhone 12 here, um, and uh, that's got a good reputation for having a good camera in it. But the 12 Pro Max has got the three cameras. So it's got the ultra wide, which is basically an F, I'm looking at me notes here, it's got an F 2.4 ultra wide lens. Um, it's got the wide lens. So if you look uh, here, so one of these lenses is, I'm not sure which how they've configured these actually, but one of them is, um, as I say, ultra wide is an F 2.4 uh, lens. It's a fixed aperture. All of these lenses have fixed apertures. So the ultra wide is an f2.4, the wide is an f1.6. So that lets a lot of light in. And the telephoto is an f2.2. So that's pretty impressive. That's a pretty impressive set of figures as far as the apertures are concerned. So you will get, you know, a really wide aperture, particularly great for low light photography. Um, but the big downside with uh, up until these days with mobile phone photography is the the uh, lack of being able to adjust that aperture. So you are completely restrained to that one fixed aperture. The I mean, the elements in here are far too small to be able to put a variable aperture in the lens module. So it's a fixed aperture on all mobile phones. I've yet to come across one that has got, you know, a variable aperture. So with that in mind, when you are taking photographs and video, instead of the traditional triangle, which you can adjust the shutter speed, aperture and ISO, all you can adjust on a mobile phone is the shutter speed and ISO. Now, when you're taking video, you want it to be kept at, uh, well, here in the UK at 1 50th of a second, because the shutter speed, you want to be double your frame rate. 
So we were stood at 120, uh, 125th of a second, which would mean the shutter speed would be 150th. And the frame rate in the US would be uh, uh, 30, uh, 30 frames a second, so that would be 160th. Which means you can't adjust the aperture to get your exposure right. Now, uh, I've got a piece of kit that I, that I bought separately, um, and it's a, basically a case, and you can slot onto it. This is the case here. Um, I shall show you. This is the case. Let's go to here. So that's the case that I bought separately, um, and it's got uh, cutouts on it for being able to fit a neutral, a variable neutral density filter. So for filming, this is great for me. So this is the variable uh, ND filter. That just comes out of the case, he says. Try not to get my fingers all over it, but that, that just clips onto the um, case, which I do a review of separately. I review the case and the ND filter as a separate item at some point. Um, but yeah, so with that, I can actually vary the exposure going down onto the sensor, which would be fantastic. It still keep that uh, 150th of a second. But today, I don't want to look at video. I want to look at stills. I want to know, can this camera, even though it has got a fixed aperture, can it take decent stills that will match? It won't exceed. I'm pretty sure it won't exceed, but can match the RX100 VA. And that means when I go out, again, with my girlfriend, go out with my brother, whatever, then I don't have to take two cameras with me. Um, now, we've said what the lenses are and the sensors. Each lens... Um, each lens in this module has its own sensor. So it's effectively three cameras in one. And that is an interesting way. But that's the only way mobile phone manufacturers have been able to get around the fact that there's no zoom lens in there. Um, so effectively, you have one camera module that is your ultra wide. Then you uh, go to another camera module, which becomes your standard. And then another module is your telephoto. Um, and I know there is digital um, uh, algorithms between those three, so you can actually dig digitally zoom in between those three. I don't do that. I use the fixed three. But that's fine for me. Um, you know, that's certainly better than the lights of the, uh, let's say, for example, the uh, Ricoh GR, uh, GR3. Now, that's a great camera, apparently. That's an APS-C sensor, so the images are going to be better. But that's, there's two models. You've either got a fixed 28mm lens or a fixed 40mm lens. But at least on this, you've got three lenses. And, you know, I think the uh, photographs that come out of this are great. I'm loving them. I haven't printed any yet, and I will be printing them. But I think there's great potential uh, for this to, you know, completely replace my, you know, RX100 VA. Now, if we look at um, what I've got loaded on here, uh, let's go and get rid of that. But if, what I've got loaded on here are various camera apps. Now, I'm going to go through. If we look in there, you can see I've got a bunch of different camera apps, mainly video-related apps. Um, but uh, if we um, go to the conventional the camera that Apple provides, we go into camera, that's the Apple's um, you know, camera. Um, so you've got your different modes. You've got photo mode, video mode at the bottom here. We all know how that works. And then you just select which camera you want. The ultra wide, your wide is standard. So it's one times, which is basically standard. And uh, um, your telephoto. The telephoto is a 2.5 times, uh, times telephoto. So it's 2.5 times more than the standard. From what I gather, I believe that's how it works. Um, and you've also got a mode on here, which is great, called portrait mode. Now, that's using computational photography. And what that's doing, it's creating a sharp image. Well, I call it portrait mode because it's for like taking portraits. So you get your background blur. You get your bokeh in the background. So it creates that artificial blur in the background. But I tell you what, it's, it's flipping phenomenal. Um, when it first came out on the iPhone 7, it was pretty rough. It was a bit rough and ready. You could see where it's blended the, you know, the, the two, the um, background to the foreground. But this is so good. You could almost get away with it, you know. I think it is so, so good. Um, 
And I'm going to show you a few images taken with this phone and this camera. The other brilliant thing that this um, uh, phone has, they've now included Apple Raw. But in standard photo mode, top right hand corner, you see a little thing up there, uh, so it's showing raw at the moment. So um, you can see that says raw. So that will now take a raw image and a JPEG, both at the same time. So that's phenomenal. Um, and with raw, I think most of us know what a raw image is. Basically, a raw image is the data off the sensor. But in Apple's case, it's a little bit more than that. It's not just the, the raw data. It's the data of the computational photography as well. So it, it kind of blends it all. So you've got a whole range of um, things that you can do in your post-editing that is, is great. It it's actually converts it to a DNG file, which is a digital negative file um, invented by Adobe, I believe. So almost every bit of software will work with a DNG file. Now I'm using, if we have a quick look at some of these images, because uh, I've, I've shot them in RAW, I've also shot them in the new HEIC, I think mean, that's what we call it, HEIC format, which is a, a higher compression than JPEG, but it's, it works better. It, it, it handles that compression better than what a JPEG image does. So now let's, uh, let's have a look at um, some of these images. Uh, now I think most of these are DNG files, so let's go to that one. Now I'm just loading these in um, Capture One Pro. I use Capture One Pro a great deal these days. I really like Capture One Pro. Um, in fact, in, uh, in the description of this video, there'd be a link to download a trial version of Capture One Pro. If you do like it, and I think you probably will, if you use the code AVP10 when you check out, you will get 10% off your purchase price or your subscription price. So um, it's a great, great deal and it's a great bit of software. Um, and I've also got various other deals such as Luminar 4 or Luminar AI. It's quite a bit cheaper, still really, really good. And you get, uh, if you use the code AVP with Luminar, you'll get, uh, 10, uh, get $10 off. So um, anyway, let's get back to uh, Capture One Pro. So these images, there's clarity, there's a lot of sharpness. Uh, in fact, the sharpness is great. Look at that. I generally think these images are really, really good. They're crisp, they're clean. Um, in some cases, they're slightly over sharpened, I think. But the great thing is, uh, with Capture One Pro and uh, probably with, well, not probably, almost certainly with various other software, you can either increase the sharpness and you can decrease the sharpness. Um, obviously, you don't want to be increasing the sharpness, uh, but uh, you can decrease it, that's gone too sharp. But you can actually take the sharpness down um so there and that just makes it doesn't make it not sharp but it just softens the image so it doesn't look so um uh, clinical and it doesn't look so digital um and that's great that you can do that because it's a dng file but also because it's a dng file you're able to do um, a lot more creative stuff with it you can bring out the highlights um let's go through like here now if we look at before and after, and this is a lovely thing with Capture One. Again, you can um, you, you can choose, choose a before and after, and straight away you can see just by moving the bar across. See, before, a bit washed out. These white ball things are all washed out. But as you move a bar across, you can see I've, I've pulled the highlights down and lifted the shadows. Um, and again, because it's a DNG file, you can do that nice and easily. Um, and there's plenty of plenty of sharpness there and clarity. I'm again. I generally am blown away by by how good, you know, these set again. You look at this uh, by how good these sensors are, these lenses are in these new mobile phones. And you know, with a mobile phone, you've got it with you at all times, haven't you? The vast majority of us have our mobile phone with us at all time. So, you know. It's brilliant, isn't it? Now, the other thing that did concern me was with a slab like this is the being able to see it. Because one thing I do enjoy about the RX100 um, is the fact it's got, if we look at, uh, where are we? Here we go. It's got a little viewfinder. Oh, 
so you can actually use that viewfinder um, if it's a bright sunny day you can put your eye up to um, the viewfinder you know to take the photograph that's great you have to squint a bit because it's a very very tiny viewfinder at least you know there is one um, and you know that is that is brilliant um, obviously with a phone it hasn't got a viewfinder so um, you can't do that but the screen is so large on the 12 Pro Max and it's so bright but I've had no problem seeing it in daylight because of its size and because of its brightness so I don't see that now as a huge advantage having the RX100 5A over and above the um, you know iPhone so uh, and, I mean I will do some comparisons I will go out and take some photographs of the same thing with the um, uh, RX100 V8 and the iPhone 12 Pro Max just to you know so you, uh, you guys and girls can see the difference now I will also be uploading these uh, images onto my Flickr page so you can actually go through these images uh, that I've taken with an uh, iPhone 12 Pro Max and you can see for yourself what you, what you think of them uh, it's much better than seeing them on the YouTube uh, channel because the compression that YouTube create really doesn't show how good or bad these images are um, I say good or bad I think they're really good um, I mean, it's a great purchase this phone you know um, but you see here now these little flowers still come out lovely and sharp um, but they're not over sharp that's the thing I've always as I said earlier I, I keep saying this I've always found mobile phone images to look like mobile phone images but it seems like oh, isn't it, this is an interesting one um, but I couldn't get the phone even though I moved the focus point over the um, uh, I don't know what it is but this thing on this pole uh, move the focus point over it. it would not focus on it so it's not bulletproof the whole system isn't bulletproof but the keeper rate is certainly higher with the iPhone 12 Pro Max than it was with my um, uh, little RX100 VA so um, that to me in itself is of interest but yeah it's, it's focused on the background and not the thing that I was hoping it would focus on so that was interesting but again you look at um, this here this is, that's how it came off the sensor that's the data off the sensor because it's a DNG file um, but you can bring back the detail look at that bring back all that detail so I've brought the highlights down but lifted up the shadows now if you're shooting just JPEGs or the HEIC format you are very restricted as to how much you can pull the uh, uh, highlights down and the shadows up you can't do a great deal with JPEGs because all the data is baked into that file but with raw files it's not baked in there's a lot of latitude as to what you can do with it and it's great now that mobile phone uh, manufacturers are taking photography incredibly seriously um, and I say this is another reason why uh, you know compact camera sales have plummeted to the extent where manufacturers are not making them anymore I don't know how many more of the RX100 range you know um, Sony are gonna make who knows but um, yeah it's uh, um, you know uh, great camera and, and the, again you look at this here same issue it's slightly overexposed you know uh, but you can bring those highlights right down back you know um, and get a really nice image that you'd be happy to print um, now again here now this is a DN this is a HEIC file now this one here I would have done this almost certainly in portrait mode you can see I mean, again you can see that I probably have done that in portrait mode because the background is well out of focus but have, when you look at it on Flickr you know it's done a marvelous job it really has done a marvelous job if you pixel peep it wouldn't be as good as you know a conventional camera but it's done such a I mean I, I again I'm blown away by how good it's done that if we look um, if we zoom in on the center part here crisp oh, that's gonna be too tight right absolutely crisp 
but look at the background out of focus. Look at all these very tiny, you know, it, it hasn't blurred any of the, this plant, but it has just picked out the background. It looks pretty natural. It looks, well, it looks really natural. So look at that, you've got a, a lovely image with, um, you know, depth. So it has separated the foreground from the background, which is exactly what portrait mode is designed to do. Uh, I'm fascinated that with this computational photography, how damn good it's getting, how really realistic and damn good it's getting. Um, it will never replace for a professional, well, not yet it won't anyway, it will never replace, you know, um, a professional camera, uh, you know, because the size of it, you can't adjust the apertures with these cameras, you know, um, what you've got is what you've got in there. Uh, and you can see if they put a, a, you know, a bigger lens in there, this would have to be a lot fatter to be able to get a bigger lens in there. But um, for what it is, I think this is phenomenal. And all I've been using is the standard Apple stock app. You know, I've not been using, you know, any of the other apps. I've got quite a few other ones. They're a bit, I find them a bit complicated. This one's great. All I do is just hit that button there and we're back in raw mode. And then you can see I'm in photo mode at the bottom there. Um, obviously you can do landscapes or portrait with it. Um, works an absolute treat. And I'll tell you how I've got around the, you know, the, the grief of holding this and worrying about dropping it or whatever. It is this, this um, case. The case I got, um, whoops, which, this is a, a case I got, which is a Light Chaser Pro case. Um, and it came with the variable ND filter, so that is phenomenal. But it's got a, a strap that you put onto the case, and when you put it in this case, then you've got a shutter button on the case. So I've got around the fact of worrying about dropping the phone by using, you know, a decent. And there's loads of cases you can get like that. I'm sure uh, that won't be the only one. So I've got around that bit. Um, and then I've got a little pouch I just keep on my pocket. You can't see that, but a little pouch I keep on my pocket, but I drop it in. So, you know, absolutely brilliant. But, um, yeah, this computational photography, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's good. And again, you know, you look at what I can do with that. That, that sky, completely blown out. But using the, um, uh, using Capture One, Lightroom, whatever, because it's a DNG file, I can bring that right the way back. Um, very, very good. These are all just, uh, my girlfriend took these photographs. And again, they're just HEIC files. So you didn't worry about using raw. Lovely and sharp, lovely detail. But again, I could, if I wanted to, if I felt those a bit over sharpened, I could take the sharpening down a bit. I can reduce that down you know, obviously you can increase it as well, but you can take that down just to um, take it, you know, take that slight digital sort of look off. Um, but I don't think these really have a digital look anyway. I think they're really good. Uh, not like previous mobile phone images I've seen. I have never been really that pleased with them. Um, and I think off the iPhone 12 Pro Max are very good. I will be doing a comparison between this and the um, iPhone 12. I mean, there is quite a size difference between the two. You can kind of see there is, you know, quite a difference in size between these these two phones, um, the screen size, but also the cameras. Uh, particularly, if you look on the on the cameras, you can clearly see the 12, 12 Pro Max has three camera modules. The iPhone 12 has only the two. So the iPhone 12 doesn't have the uh, ultra wide camera, which is the f2.4 ultra wide camera. The 12, the 12 Pro Max has got that, but the 12 hasn't. Um, and uh, there are differences also with the sensors on uh, both cameras. So there we go. That's the image quality, um, you know, and what I think of the. Go through those all the time, you know, love them. Um, that's what I think of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. 
and the uh, uh, images that come off the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now, I will be doing a lot more videos to do with this particular phone. I know now, as of September 2021, the iPhone 13 has uh, been launched. Um, I can't see myself getting the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I certainly don't need it. Um, but uh, again, when you look at the iPhone 13 Pro, 12, 13 Pro Max, they've got more computational video elements within it. So you can adjust focus and do focus racking with it. It's phenomenal. Mobile phones are really coming on in leaps and bounds with camera technology. Um, but I'm loving it. So here we go. Uh, I hope you found that useful. There will be, as I say, a lot more videos coming to do with your iPhone 12 Pro Max, so stay tuned and ask me if there's anything that you would like to see. I'll be doing a video on the um, Light Scrape, uh, Light Scrape, Light Chaser Pro uh, case and um, ND filter, a very ND filter. I'll be doing a video dedicated to video uh, with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I'm very, very impressed with the video quality that comes off it. Um, and I'll be doing various other videos on some of the accessories, such as another case that I got, which was the small rig um, uh, case and grip. So I'll be talking about that and how I, you know, and how I use that. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot to come, and I'm really, really excited because I never ever thought in my wildest dreams that I would enjoy using a mobile phone for me photography and video. There is one drawback that the iPhone 12 Pro Max uh, has, which a friend of mine brought up only today, actually. He said he's not that impressed with the camera of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And I said, well, how do you mean? You know, it's brilliant. Now he sells a lot on eBay, so he's always having to do close-up shots of jewelry or watches and that kind of thing. He says, well, the macro is awful. And he's right, it hasn't got a macro lens. It hasn't got a close focusing lens on the 12 Pro Max. But apparently on the iPhone 13, they've addressed that, um, although he hasn't got the iPhone 13, but you know, they've addressed that and it does focus a lot closer. And I certainly agree with him. I have found the close focusing on the 12 Pro Max is an issue, um, but not an issue for me because I don't do any of that. I don't need that, uh, but it is an issue for him. So if you are into macro, or you want to do really close-up stuff, possibly the iPhone 12 Pro Max isn't the camera stroke phone for you. You might want to look elsewhere or look at the new iPhone 13 range. So there we go. That's the, my initial thoughts of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Don't forget to take a look at my Flickr page. Uh, there will be a link in the description. And take a look at Capture One Pro and Luminar. Um, see what you think of them. Download the trial versions. It doesn't cost anything. There's no fee involved you don't have to put your credit card details in when you do that so you know it's well worth looking at uh, that software as well so there we go and remember to subscribe and like my channel so i've got all of those things out of the way now all i've got to say is thanks very much for watching and stay tuned for more videos relating to video and photography cheers for now bye